said, it's a judgment, and the first century didn't sound like the glorious appearing of Christ mentioned in Titus 2.13. This is likely the case with most who hold to a futurist view of the second coming. People having read the fabulous imaginative descriptions of what Christ's uh, return should be like in the popular prophetic paperbacks have been conditioned to expect certain phenomena. They've been led to believe that the return of Christ must be more spectacular than any Hollywood movie, better than any special effects. And since the reading of history has virtually became a thing of the past, ignorance surrounding the events of the fall of Israel in the first century abounds. Even those that have attempted uh, to do some study of the first century must admit that reading about the events isn't uh, nearly as spectacular as watching a good TV show or a good movie on a big screen. Perhaps one day a movie will be made. Special effects wizards uh, will dazzle us with the wonders that took place during uh, that war in the first century. For now, we have to uh, learn to read what the Jewish and Roman historians wrote. If we try to picture the disconcerting sight of a comet shaped like a sword hanging over the city of Jerusalem for an entire year, the massive eastern gates swinging open by themselves. An unearthly light emanating from the temple and the voice of God thundering, let us depart from this place. And the terrifying spectacle of angelic host and glittering battle array surrounding the capital city and fighting against it. If we could witness the hand of God striking those that rejected his covenant, first with madness, starvation, plagues, death, finally selling them off into slavery in Egypt. I know this may seem whole hum when you compare it to the books that are written today and the spectacular movies. But to those who witnessed it in the first century, these things were indeed none could deny that they were glorious that they saw the return of the righteous judge.